Eugene Mulleville was a businessman and developer who owned and operated a ski area in Vernon Township, New Jersey. While his business saw success during skiing season, he wanted to attract more visitors during the summer season. So for the summer of 1976, Eugene would install a 2,700-foot-long alpine slide alongside one of the steep ski trails. The installation of these slides would ferment the creation of one of the world's most dangerous and deadly amusement parks of all time, while the locals would appropriately refer to the amusement park as Class Action Park due to the seemingly endless amounts of class action lawsuits from the numerous injuries sustained on the rides. It would infamously become known to the world as Action Park. The odds of you dying in a roller coaster accident are roughly 1 in 16 million. Significant technological advancements in engineering and heavy safety regulations have made you more susceptible to die in an airplane crash or even be struck by lightning. Even though theme parks are a multi-billion dollar industry, freak accidents still do occur. Join me, Derek Schadel, as we take a deep dive into the engineering process behind these magnificent machines and investigate the reasons that led up to these rides going off the rails. The Alpine Slides at Action Park featured long, cement and fiberglass built tracks that traveled down a mountain in which riders could speed down in a small wheeled cart, while the riders could control their own speed going down the mountain using a handbrake. But it actually turned out that many of the brakes on the carts didn't actually work, which sent riders flying down the mountain until they wiped out on the fiberglass and concrete track, tearing riders skin to shreds like they were sliding down on sandpaper. To warn riders of the dangers of wiping out on the alpine slide, the ski lift that led to the ride would feature pictures of injuries that riders sustained from the ride. After the alpine slides began to draw in some crowds during the summer, Eugene saw this as an opportunity to expand the park. So in 1978, Action Park would see its first expansion with the addition of two water slides and a go-kart track. With each passing summer, the park saw more and more visitors, so Gene would keep adding expansions to both the amusement park and water park, and even opened a new subsection of his amusement park called Motor World, where guests could ride attractions based around powered vehicles and boats. However, with each passing year, more and more injuries occurred in the park, which brought along allegations of negligence and the park cutting corners for profit, instead of focusing on the safety of the riders. Another issue was that the majority of the employees were under-trained teenagers, who were oftentimes under the influence of alcohol and couldn't care less about the actual labor portion of the job. Alcohol was also widely available to visitors throughout the park, plus the enforcement of the legal drinking age was entirely relaxed. Doctors who treated injured riders from Action Park noted that many of them were under the influence. The son of Gene, Andy Mulleville, is quoted saying, Gene didn't want to do the same old shit where you just get strapped into something or it twirls around. He wanted to take the idea of skiing, which is exhilarating because you control the action, and transfer it into an amusement park. There's an inherent risk in that, but that's what makes it fun, as the rides you could find at Action Park were like nothing else on Earth. And of course, nearly all of the rides were completely built in-house by his own team. Some of the rides you can find in the amusement park section of Action Park was the Alpine Slide, a 70-foot tall bungee jumping tower, and a skate park that was so horribly designed that it closed after one season. Former park employee Tom Fergus is quoted as saying that the skate park was responsible for so many injuries that we covered it up with dirt and pretended it never existed. And another proposed ride that never opened to the public was the Bailey Ball. Riders would climb inside of a large foam ball then would be rolled down the mountain on a track made out of PVC pipes. What the engineers forgot to remember was that PVC pipes expanded in the heat. So on a hot summer day, with the state inspector present, the engineers of the ride decided to test the ride for the first time. So a man climbed inside of the ball and began to roll along the track. Of course, one of the PVC pipes broke and it sent the ball rolling off the track and down the mountain. The ball continued to roll through the parking lot and across Route 94. Eventually, the ball later came to a sudden stop after landing in a nearby swamp. The inspector, 
left without saying a word. In the Motor World section of Action Park, guests could ride the Super Go-Karts, which were supposed to be maxed out at 20 miles an hour. But the employees found a way to increase the speed to 50 miles an hour after they would stick tennis balls into the device that limited the speed of the go-karts. Soon after, many riders suffered injuries from head-on collisions and races that turned into high-speed bumper car matches. Park management would eventually build a microbrewery near another one of the go-kart tracks, where the employees would break into it after hours and steal the liquor, before taking the go-karts for a spin down Route 94. Another popular attraction in Motor World was the Battle Action Tanks, which involved guests entering a miniature tank and firing tennis balls at the other tanks in the arena. This was the employee's least favorite attraction to work, as when they were assisting tanks that got stuck in the arena, they would often be shot at with tennis balls by other riders. The area also featured a small pond where guests could drive speedboats or bumper boats in heavily snake-infested waters. The bumper boats also featured super small vehicles that required all tall riders to dangle their legs outside of the boat, which often resulted in numerous fractures after the boats had collided. Finally, the water park, which accounted for the greatest number of injuries and casualties in all of Action Park. There, you could ride an enclosed water slide that featured a vertical loop at the end of the slide. The engineers were so intimidated to test the ride that they offered employees $100 to test it. The slide was only open for a month before it was closed down by the state's advisory board on carnival amusement ride safety. Riders often suffered from bloody noses, back injuries, severe lacerations, and so much worse. When the ride was closed for the investigation, teeth that had fallen out of the riders was found lodged inside of the walls of the slide and a Navy physician found that riders experienced nearly 9 Gs of acceleration when they went through the loop. The kayak experience was a whitewater course that used electric fans to create the rapids. Oftentimes, the rapids got so tough that most of the kayaks got stuck or tipped over. The water park also included the Tarzan Swing, which was a 20-foot long cable over a pool supplied with natural spring water which was typically freezing cold and would shock guests as they jumped from the blistering summer sun of New Jersey and into the ice cold water of the pool. One of the most infamous areas in the water park was the wave pool, as it soon began to be known as the grave pool, as it was the attraction that had the most casualties within the park, as a total of three people died in the wave pool over the course of the park's history. However, the first casualty in the park occurred on the alpine slides on July 8, 1980, as a 19-year-old boy was riding down the alpine slide when his car sped off the track and his head collided on a nearby rock. He was rushed to the hospital but passed away from his injuries just a week later. Another casualty occurred on the kayak experience ride on August 1, 1980, when a 27-year-old man had his kayak tip over on the river rapids and when he attempted to climb back into his boat, his leg came into contact with one of the underwater fans and gave him a severe electric shock. The shock sent him into a cardiac arrest and managed to injure several other riders nearby. He was taken to a local hospital where he later died. Another visitor suffered a fatal heart attack in 1984 after using the Tarzan swing to jump into the cold spring water. The water was nearly 20 degrees colder here than any other ride in the water park, which was believed to have put his heart into shock. Action Park continued to operate until 1997 when GAR, the parent company of Action Park, and the ski resort was sued by multiple banks for not paying back the nearly $19 million in debt. The company began to have massive layoffs, but was still optimistic that the park could open in the summer of that year. But unfortunately for Gene, it never did, and the original Action Park would never open again. Eventually, Eugene Mulliville would pass away on October 27, 2012. But Action Park saw a very small reopening from 2014 to 2016. The park had completely changed though, as many of the original rides were now gone and replaced with basic attractions. However, it brought in nowhere near the number of visitors as the original Action Park did which left Action Park to finally close its doors for good.
Thank you for listening to Off the Rails, a true crime podcast investigating series of amusement park accidents from across the world. Until next time, I'm Derek Shadle.